Take one man trapped in the wreckage of his life. Taunt him with a false hope for escape. That's our story. The Sixth Bullet. Taken from the files of John Steele. Adventurer. <laughs> friends. This is John Steele, back with another story of thrilling suspense and hard, fast action. And this week's tale is worth listening to, carefully, because it's about a man and a decision. Probably the most frightening decision that one can make. To tell it, here is the man, Harry Wilson. Harry? Some people can get used to anything, to loneliness, to worry, to failure, to ugliness. I wasn't that kind. All my life, I'd never gotten what I wanted. Only I couldn't laugh it off like other people do. I tried, but it didn't work. I guess it all came to a head that night when I got back from the office. I'd been working for three months setting up a company insurance plan for a big client. If it went through, it'd mean a new life for Grace and myself. We could move out of the apartment, get out in the suburbs, maybe even buy a house. When I got home, Grace was in the kitchen getting supper. She heard the door slam and called to me that dinner would be ready in 15 minutes. I walked into the living room, picked up the paper, and sat down. But the headlines didn't interest me. I wondered if Marie would have called from the kitchen or if she'd have met me at the door. Marie. She was the girl I wanted to marry. You set the table, Harry? Yeah. Plumber was here today. Yeah? Fixed the drain in the bathtub. Must have taken a cup of scum out of the thing. What did he charge? Five dollars. Isn't there something you could do about that? Like what? I don't know. Must be something you could pour down the drain that'll help. I'll ask the grocer. Do that. While he was here, he looked at the tap in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. What he really needs a new faucet. Put in a new washer. Said it'd hold for a while. Dinner will be ready in five... Put out butter plates. Huh? Just something extra to wash. Oh, yeah. Really, Harry, I'll put them away. You go wash. I don't know what you're doing, Doctor. I can't hear you. Where's the towel? What? Where's the towel? I just told you in the closet. Just wouldn't run the water so hard. I told you the laundry went away today. Please, Grace. Sit down. Everything's ready. Left the light on in the bathroom. So what? I'll get it. Leave it on. Trying to make ends meet. Leave it on. What happened at the office today? Wondered if you were going to ask. One of your moods again. No? No. Well, what happened? The Bridgeport deal fell through. Why? Did they have to give a reason? They just said the board of directors decided against it. <sighs> Too bad. I don't get it. The corporation has the money. The plan was sound. was a good investment all the way around. The only reason they gave? Yeah. Just like everything else. Everything else. Nothing works out. Look at us. I'm 40 years old, Grace. We've been married for 10 years and we've got nothing to show for it. Nothing. I know it. Living in a lousy two-room apartment. Have to watch every penny. Not a red cent in the bank. We don't even have a kid. Oh, it's probably lucky we don't. Don't talk like that. Everything I touch turns to stone. I'm 40 years old. I haven't got much more time. What are things going to get better? Harry, I'm please. a failure, Grace. Don't you understand? A failure. I can't stand it anymore. I just can't stand it. Harry! Harry! I 
didn't know where I was going. I just knew I had to get out of that room, away from Grace and all the ugliness she stood for. When I got down on the street, I walked over to our car and got in. The window by the driver's seat was still cracked where Grace had hit the tree six months before. I remember I looked at the gas gauge before I stepped on the starter. I'd put a dollar's worth of gas in the tank last Sunday, and there was still some left. Then I was driving away from the city and out into the suburbs. It wasn't a conscious thing, but suddenly I realized I was in John's neighborhood, and I decided to see him. He'd helped me before on nights like this. Maybe he could help me now. Yeah? Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, John. Well, come in, come in. You got company? No. It's good. John, let's go I... into the library where we'll be comfortable. Sure. There now. Sit down, Harry. Glad you dropped in. How's Grace? All right, I guess. She get over her cold yet? Yeah, sure. John. How about I... a drink, Harry? No. No, thanks. Scotch? Rye? No, thanks. Beer? I want to talk to you, John. Okay. Shoot. I... It's the same old thing. I thought you were all straightened out. Yeah, so did I. Happened all over again. Sure you don't want a drink? No. Well, let's start at the beginning. Bridgeport deal fell through. Mm -hmm. Just like everything else. No matter what I do, I fail. Hey. It's true. Never gotten anything I wanted. It's too much for me. I can't take it. It's too much for me. Take it easy, Harry. How can I? You don't know what it's like. You can't think when you're upset like this. That's all I do. If I could just turn my mind off for a while. Think, think, think. That's all I do. You've got to get a hold of yourself. Yeah, I guess so. That's better. Do you like your job, Harry? It's a living. But do you like it? What's that got to do with it? I thought maybe you were due for a change. I've thought of that. Well? I've thought how nice it'd be to start all over. No responsibilities, no nothing. Just start all over with a clean slate. Why don't you? What? Oh. I think it'd do you a world of good. Yeah. Any reason why you can't? Six months behind on the rent, three months installments on the car, doctor's bills for Grace. Oh, I didn't know she was that sick. It wasn't that. She wanted to have a kid. Oh. She can't. I'll be glad to help you out, Harry. Get you back on your feet. That's not the answer. Well, you know best. Whatever I can do for you, you let me know. Yeah. I think I'll take that drink now. Sure. What'll it be? Anything. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. My eye had caught the gun on John's desk. I saw his back disappear through the door and the door closed. Then I was over at the desk picking up the gun. It felt cold and efficient in my hand. John was right. I had to start over with a clean slate, and that meant Grace. Grace was the millstone round my neck, tying me down to ugliness and failure. Clean slate, that's what I wanted. I walked softly down the hall, opened the door, and stepped out into the night. Highway stretched straight and shiny in the moonlight before me. The car was running smoothly under me, and inside my heart was singing. I felt that I was at the beginning of a new life. Things would get better from now on. They had to get better. I thought with pleasure of the look that would be on Grace's face when I stood before her with a gun in my hand. All those wasted, wasted years. But now they'd be forgotten, and I'd be free. Then I heard a loud report. The car swerved. The guardrail danced crazily in the headlights, and my head crashed forward on the steering wheel. <laughs> Start over, Harry. Bill. Start over, Harry. Bill. Oh. Harry. Bill. Harry. Bill. Harry. Bill. 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 Bill.
first thing I heard was the sound of steam, and I thought of fire. I tried to move to reach the ignition, but a white hot pain shot through my body, and I realized the steering wheel was crushed against my chest. The smell of gasoline filled the car, and I knew I had to turn off the motor. I leaned forward again. This time I reached it, and the motor died. The branch of a tree was sticking through the window by my side, and the leaves were brushing my face. I raised my arms to break the branch, but the wood was tough, and I couldn't break it. The car had landed right side up in a ravine by the side of the highway, and every once in a while I heard a car go by on the road above me. I noticed my headlights were still on. It wouldn't be long, I thought. Surely someone on the road above would notice the headlights and stop. Help would come soon. I tried to relax, make myself comfortable, but the pain in my chest was unbearable. The car passed above, but it didn't stop. I tried to remember what happened, but all I could see was the guardrail dancing in the headlights and the car racing for it. I seemed to remember being happy, and I tried to think of where I was going. Oh, yes, I was going to kill Grace. That was it. <laughs> it's like everything else. Everything else. Everything I touched turned to stone. I couldn't even kill my wife without bungling the job. <laughs> What was the use? What was the use of it? <laughs> the gun. That was the only answer. The gun I'd intended for Grace, I'd use it on myself. I didn't want help now. I reached up and turned off the headlight. <laughs> I tried to move to reach the glove compartment and the gun, but the steering wheel was pinning me to the seat. I grabbed the wheel with both hands and pushed with all my strength, but it didn't budge. Finally, I worked my right leg free, reached as far as I could, and banged the glove box with my foot. The pain flashed through my body like a branding iron, and I had to stop and rest. And I tried again and rested. Again and rested. Again, 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 again. And finally, the glove box dropped open and the gun fell to the floor. I kicked the gun under my feet and reached. I could feel the barrel at the tip of my fingers, but I couldn't pick it up. Up on the road, I heard a car stopping. I pressed down on the barrel with my heel, and my fingers touched the trigger guard. Then the gun was in my hand. See anything, Joe? Not yet. Something went through that hole in the fence. Yep. Wasn't there two hours ago. Nope. Hey, Sully, there's a car down there. Yeah. Hey, anybody down there? Hey! I could hear whoever it was coming down the ravine. I lifted the gun to my head and the steel was cold on my skin. Before I could pull the trigger... Anybody in there? Get back. Huh? Get back, I said. What's the matter? I've got a gun. Don't come any closer. Are you all right? Stay where you are. I'm the Springdale police. I want to help you. I don't need help. You go through the fence up there? Yeah. Are you hurt? Leave me alone. You crazy? I'm going to kill myself. Now get out of here. What? Get out. Wait a minute, mister. I don't want to hurt you. But, uh, Leave me alone. Let me talk to him. I told you, I don't want to hurt you. You don't want to do a thing. I don't want to hurt you. Now get back. But, uh... Back! It's all right, Joe. He took a shot at me. You're all right. Call headquarters. Tell him to get some help out of here fast. <laughs> The air was blue with a heavy smoke of burned gunpowder. For the first time in my life, I felt the raw violence of firing a gun. The cop climbed back out of the ravine, and I was alone. Off in the distance, I heard them radio for help. This was the time for it. If ever there was a time, this was it. A slight pressure from the finger. I might even feel the shock in my arm. Then a car stopped on the highway above. Then another, and another. I heard the cop tell them to move on, but the crowd started to grow. They stood around silently watching Vultures, all of them vultures, waiting for the feast. Then one of the cops was climbing down into the ravine. How do you feel, Wilson? What? We checked your plates. How do you feel? Let me alone. Anything I can do for you? No. You don't want to do this, Wilson. Let me alone. No matter how tough things are, they aren't that bad. Get out of here. I'm not going to do nothing, just talk to you. Let me alone. You like baseball? Looks like the Sox got the pennant in the bag. 
Be nice to be around for the World Series. Beat it. You a ball fan? No. <coughs> what, what do you like? Nothing. Must be something. Let me alone. Fishing. Get out. Hunting. Get out. <coughs> Why don't you change your mind? No. If you could do a clean job, that'd be one thing. What? Maybe you just messed yourself up, then you'd be worse off than before. Let me alone, will you? A lot of them do, you know. Let me alone. Did you ever think of that? <coughs> Come on, Wilson. Give me the gun. Get back. You don't want to kill yourself. Don't move. Okay. More vultures. What? Come down for the feast. Hey, your friends, Wilson. Yeah. Better stay where you are, Mac. It's all right, officer. Harry? What are you doing here? I came as soon as I heard. Let me alone. I'll take care of you. He's dangerous. Took a shot at me. I'll take care of him. Okay, Mac. Hope you know what you're doing. What's it all about, Harry? It's all over. What? I'm going to finish it. Why? I can't stand it anymore, that's all. I was afraid of this when I found the gun missing. Make them turn off those flashlights. I can't do that, Harry. Why? It's their job. They're trying to help. <laughs> help? Yes. Why don't they leave me alone? They can't. Harry, will you let me get into the car? No. You're hurt. You'll die anyway if you won't let us help you. What difference does it make? A lot. Sure. Because I don't think you want to go through with this. Oh, let me alone. You've been in the car for two hours. If you wanted to, you'd have done it by now. Get out of here. Talk, talk, talk. That's all I've heard. I'll do it. You wait and see. I'll do it. I'll do it. <coughs> Why haven't you, Harry? Every time I start, something happens. That's not the real reason. Somebody starts to talk. It's more than that. All right, it takes guts, that's why. That's what I thought. It takes guts to pull that trigger. No, it doesn't. That's the easy way. <laughs> easy way. It takes a lot more guts to face the music. Shut up! Of <laughs> you know what I'd do if I could? <coughs> what? I'd come in that car and beat some sense into your head. Oh, don't try it. What's the matter with you? Have you lost your mind? I don't understand. I understand, all right. You had a couple of hits on the head, and now you're turning tail and running. No one understands. I know dozens of men who'd give 20 years of their life to be in your shoes. Sure. Take a look at yourself, Harry. You've got everything you came into this world with. Two arms, two legs, two eyes, everything. Go away. You ought to be ashamed. Oh, boy, we'll go away. <laughs> I'm coming in, Harry. And I'm going to take that gun away from you. Don't you? I'm coming. I don't want to hurt you. Don't, John. Next time I'll shoot at you. I'll be alone. After that, they didn't bother me as much as before. Every once in a while, John came down and talked to me, asked me if I wanted anything, but most of the time, they left me alone. I had the feeling they were waiting for something. I didn't know what. The crowd got bigger and bigger, and pretty soon I saw flashlight bulbs exploding as the reporters arrived. None of them dared come close enough, though. I just sat there and listened to the crickets. Once I started to light a cigarette, but then I remembered the gasoline and changed my mind. Not that way. At least I wanted it to be clean. What if they'd only go away? If they'd only go away, I'd do it. How do you feel, Harry? Hmm? How do you feel? Okay. You changed your mind? No. I want you to talk to someone. It's no use. Just promise me you won't do anything. It's no use. What have you got to lose? Promise? Okay. All right. Come on over. Hello, Harry. Grace. 
John's idea, not mine. It's no use. I... I wanted to say if you've been unhappy. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't think it was all my fault. No. I... I... Go on, Grace. I wanted to say... that I don't care. About what? Go on. I don't care what you do. So you needn't be dramatic. Nobody's gonna miss you. Uh, I didn't think you would. You can do anything you want. Harry. Harry, don't you believe in a God? Get her out of here. If it was your time, you would have been killed in the ring. God. Don't do it. Harry, it's wrong. It's wrong. Come on, Grace. I couldn't go through it. I know. Get her out of here. You've no right to do it. Come on, Grace. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I'm sorry, Harry. I thought it would help. Oh, uh, what help? Harry, you... I want to die, can't you understand? I want to die. Why, you stupid... I want to die. You don't know when you're well off. Shut out of here. You know what this thing is doing to Grace? Shut up. She loves you. Sure, there were a lot of things wrong. But she loves you anyway. Will you leave me alone? She came down here and said the things I told her to say. Because she loves you and she hoped that it helped. You know how hard that was for her? I don't care. You ought to die. Oh, shut She'd be better off with us. Shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> Go on, Harry. Shoot again. Shoot again. Go on. Oh, no, you don't. I can see through that. No matter what happens, I'm saving that sixth one for myself. I knew I was going to have to be careful from then on. They thought they were smarter than me. Thought they could get me to shoot all the shells, but I'd show them. If they wanted to play that way, I'd show them. The hours dragged by. Steele came down and talked to me, but I didn't listen. I was on to him now. I'd show him who was smarter. The pain in my chest had gone away and I was happy again. It wouldn't be long. It wouldn't be long. Pretty soon I'd do it. I knew I would. They didn't understand how hard it was. How do you feel, Harry? I'm fine. It's getting light. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. I don't want to die in the dark. Are you in pain? Uh, what? Are you in pain? No, no, I feel wonderful. Mm-hmm. Grace still there? No, I sent her home. Uh, what? I said I sent her home. That's good. I wanted to be here when it happens. Yes. <laughs> Thought you were smarter than me, didn't you? No, Harry. Thought you could trick me. I only want to help. But what? I said no, Harry. <laughs> I'll show you. Get out of the way a minute, mister. Huh? Who's that? If I can just get one picture. You're crazy. Get out of here. Who is it? Nothing, Harry. Nothing. Come on, Wilson. Give me a break. What's she want? This picture make every front page of the country. Picture. Beat it. What difference does it make to you, Wilson? Picture. Come on, Wilson. Get out. Be a good Can't you let a man die in peace? Get her out of here. Come on. Beat it. Oh, the love you love. Get her out. Get her out. I'm sorry, Harry. I want to leave you alone. They will. Don't understand. Take it easy, Harry. Two more. There's only two more. 
What? Only two more shots. You tired, Harry? What? What? You tired? No, no. Feel like going to sleep? Hmm? That's it, Harry. Close your eyes. No. Gun's heavy. You can't even lift it. I'm okay. Can't even lift it off the seat. No. Get back! Hey, look out! Come here, Harry! What? Oh! 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 Now, Grace. Better get him up with the ambulance. Yeah. Come on. Okay, fellas, take it easy with him. Guess we can all go home now. Yeah. He's pretty broken up. Yeah. But I think he learned his lesson. Huh. That was the fifth bullet, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I'll always wonder. What? Whether he would have used the sixth one on himself. That's something we'll never know. Why? Harry didn't know it. But there wasn't any sixth bullet. Title, The Sixth Bullet, the story of a man who has yet to learn that his greatest failure was his first success. Well, friends, if you liked Harry's story, why not come back again next week? I'll have a man who found that the price of hate is destruction. I like to call it backfire. So until next week, this is John Steele saying a life of adventure is yours for the taking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It might find you. Well... Goodbye and good hunting. John Steele, Adventurer, is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. Jack Edwards was heard as Harry. Also in our cast were Connie Lemke and Sidney Paul. John Steele is played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple, and your announcer is Ted Nelly. Remember, next week... Mutual presents Backfire, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This program came from New York. There's mystery in Mutual's air on Sunday afternoons, too. Mystery from the hard-boiled sleuthing of Martin Kane, private eye, to the Western adventure tales on The Roy Rogers Show. For those with a taste for real-life crime drama, there's true detective mysteries. The shadow brings his strange power to cloud men's minds to the undoing of all criminals. And Nick Carter, master detective, unravels another baffling case to its ultimate solution. You'll agree there's no mystery like Mutual's Mystery when you listen to Martin Kane, Private Eye, The Shadow, True Detective Mysteries, Roy Rogers, and Nick Carter, where you hear the announcers say, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>